Hello, dear viewers. Welcome to my channel, Science to Technology. In today's show, Camera Tuesday, we're going to talk about a very cheap camera versus a phone. So let's dive deep into it. Now, you have to understand, uh, money is basically inflation prone, so we have to understand some context. So every company has quote-unquote affordable option. Now, again, that's affordable according to the company does not mean it's affordable for you. Okay, let that be very clear. It's not me claiming that band uh, to be like, this is affordable. It's like, again, for many people, it's like, bruh, don't even look at me. Like, you know, my card has that kind of range to like, bro, I cannot afford this. I'm not saying this. This is from a company's point of view. So you can go into any company, Sony, Nikon, Canon, Fuji, Panasonic, uh, organized by price. They will always have a very cheap option. So that is what we call affordable option here. Now, smartphones are getting expensive. Now, smartphone is one of those unique devices which not only is getting expensive, but they are also selling more of it. Meaning uh, you can see like from 2007, barely selling units, like barely reaching 200 millions to like now we are in a scenario where one successful model itself can sell 200 millions and that's almost annually like it's going bonkersly high and prices are going ludicrously high meaning there used to be a joke from everybody's like be it blackberry be it microsoft it's like nobody's gonna buy you know 300 dollar iphone people are like bruh hold my beer 1300 dollar smartphone heck my brother has that uh, s23 ultra max edition like with gigabytes and all that so as of now cameras has come down quote unquote and uh Smartphones are getting exp expensive and getting fast. Uh, so what does this mean? This simply means at this point, uh, 100,000 rupees or 1 lakh rupees or roughly, roughly, this is not absolute, roughly $1,000 is the starting point at this point in time. Meaning, uh, if any company, let's say Fuji, releases a camera and they are like, hey, this camera is $800, people will classify it as a mid-range or entry level so to say generally it would be entry level so one thousand dollars is the bare minimum to get into an ecosystem of photography so to say and uh, that's minimum for getting a quality smartphone quality as in like flagship which has software support and you can get uh, service repairs and all that so that's there now one critical aspect you have to understand we crossed that uh, rubicon of uh, early e-commerce basically where you used to have returns i recently learned it the hard way that there is no more returns meaning you can go into amazon it's like it has went from seven day return to seven day replacement and yes you can do it you can fight your hell but it's like not happening and especially for expensive things they will not happen even in flipkart seven day service center replacement they are not dealing the return anymore and uh, so this kind of is a good thing because this allows you to have incentive to go to a shop why well you can actually hold the damn thing any device you have to personally use you better hold the damn thing figure it out does it work for you does it too heavy is it too light that's a good thing to know physically before you buy because once you spend the money on it it's not coming back so that's one uh, good thing a penalty is that you have to wait longer so if a new camera model is announced you may have to wait uh, rather than three months from the announcement to get it on online to five months so your local shop has it so but again that's a good thing you can figure things out to have some actual hands-on experience because again it's a personal thing some people are like oh this cam body i'm good bro other will be like bro i can't hold it it hurts my hand and both of them are true because it's a personal thing you have to understand it's like how your clothes are made for you same way so once money is spent it's not coming back let that be very clear and buyer's remorse is very painful uh, like uh, ironically an invert of that happened i recently uh, like you know my mom's phone died so we, i upgraded uh, my phone got my phone then my father was like no i also need to go to 5g his mobile phone was not also acting up so i bought another s23 fan edition now that time because again that's only one or two months ago everybody uh, you could have waited for s24 fan edition because again that's just been released i bought it because again that time it was kind of urgency we we're like okay just buy it yeah they announced it right now and the price is sixty thousand. uh i spent forty thousand on mine so it's like uh fundamentally speaking i'm no longer in like you know i made a good decision so that's the money aspect of it this is what we are talking about one lakh or thousand dollars so to say from a company's point of view smartphones are crossing that almost regularly and camera is like barely trying uh like you know to go below that so to say so what about cameras? Now, camera, you have to understand, there is a lower limit on it. Basically, same way mechanical hard drive has a lower limit. It cannot become a cheaper beyond a certain point. Same goes with camera. Camera has just stuff in it, like a lot of stuff. For example, um, system on chip, that's the most expensive part. Another sensor. And you might be like, uh, doesn't mobile phone have a lot of sensors? Like, heck, if you are talking about S23 Ultra or 24 Ultra, it has five sensors on front, one sensor in the back. Now, here's the collected surface area would be more or less same as a APS-C. 
and maybe even smaller and compared to full frame yeah definitely smaller so you have to understand sensor size the cost of it is directly proportional not to megapixel but how many you can cut out from uh, a wafer so to say so a smaller cheaper basically you take a wafer disc how many like uh, if full frame it's like expensive fundamentally expensive uh, again even though it could be like require far more complex uh, what you call lithography machine to craft all the wirings and all that uh, even if like tiny sensor which has like 500 megapixel while you have a media, uh, medium format camera which is only 100 megapixel it would be super duper hyper expensive so sensor is expensive because of surface area battery uh, because again they have to make battery swappable and chargeable uh, and again battery they do not cheap out on and yes it's a battery your mobile phone generally runs on a cell it generally has 3.7 volt it's a single cell big cell multiple cells in parallel but generally it's just one big cell here generally most cameras are running on batteries they generally have two cells so 7.2 volt around and shipping and logistic this is the primary limit for them because you must have noticed that smartphone nowadays no longer come with charger why european union passed a law in 2022 that every smartphone from now onwards must support pd and the time given for implementation of this was 2024 meaning when this year is over 2024 is over all smartphones will support power delivery properly and uh, they could have their own extra but they must I repeat, they must, by the letter of the law, support proper fast charging using power delivery. Meaning every charger will work with every other system, every phone will work with everything else as long as you have power delivery. Now again, companies do not like this because they want to sell their proprietary BS because again, why not create more e-waste? So you will not get the fastest charging speed, but you will get more than good enough and it will work with everything. So they removed charger benefit, shipping became exponentially cheaper for them. So one shipping container can now ship exponentially more because again boxes are slimmer almost two phones per box can be sent right now so exponential grain happen cameras is not so high. even the smallest camera box is huge come in comparison so how many they can ship from let's say japan or taiwan and all that yeah it's not that much so that piles up so there is a minimum cost they cannot make it cheaper it's not like company want greedy money and all that there is an upper limit to it and these cameras suffer worsely because again there is a lower point they cannot get it lower and uh, if they make it very low they end up losing money on it so that's a very ugly truth of this sort of camera equipment size and weight cannot be cheaper than a phone because again phone small simple so let's compare some context here temp temporal context in 2010 and 2010 to 2015 was a sweet spot for dslrs and mirrorless and all that stuff but from 2015 to 20 it was the beginning of the end by 2020 the end so at this point in time the old days if basically in 2010 if you were comparing smartphone of that time quote and quote uh, to even a basic dslr which kind of revolutionized how cheap a quality dslr could be d3100 yeah there was no competition like you had uh, camera phones heck i had camera phones at that point uh, but compare that to dslr it was night and day difference like it's not even in the same realm uh, the difference was so magnificently huge however uh, by 2020 that's no longer true at this point in time unless you, you buy this sort of cheapest option available in amazon when i'm shooting this video it's like uh, 92000 that's like flagship prices 61000 it's like upper flagship um, like flagship with a lower storage kind of price and uh, like canon eos r50 yes there is r100 which is way to cut down to for even to me to list uh, nikon z30 again this is just a sampling that i'm doing all of them will be lost against a normal smartphone not even the flagship, just normal smartphone. Or most smartphone will be able to do 4K 60 FPS. Very few of them can do that. And if they can do it, they will have a lot of compromises, like it will crop or do something like that. Many of these cameras have 30 minute recording limit. Many of these cameras have over overheating probability, even if they are not limited by 30 minute. Again, that was also a European Union law. Thankfully, they have removed it. So if you are getting a modern camera that has that limit, that means company is as well. Because again, I like the idea, like let it overheat. So if I have a cooler on it or like uh, running in an indoor air conditioned environment, it can run longer. But don't give me that 30 minute limit. Like this camera has 30 minute limit. I was not rich enough back then to buy a video camera, but right now, and the next camera I'll buy will have more than 30 minute recording. So fundamentally, there is no competition. All these cameras compared to their own company's portfolio, like you look into this camera versus what Fuji offers you if you give them a bit of money. Compare uh, Sony's camera, ZV-E10, what ZV-E10 gives you versus let's say A7 Mark IV, uh, or like you know Nikon versus um, Canon and all that. You'll always find these cam cameras are way to cut down. Now here's the, how do they cut it down? They can't 
because again soc they are not going to make a different soc for all these so they generally have last generations soc okay cool uh, sensor again they are not going to spin up a new fabrication crappier sensor they are like okay let's just mass produce the uh, 24 megapixel apsc that uh, everything has 24 megapixel apsc then they're like they spin it up a bit more it could be 33 megapixel apsc you get the point apsc for all and sensor exact sensor same for all exact same analog to digital converter exact same soc and all that so how do they limit it they software limited that's the most irritating part i know the course of these they are far more powerful when the comp compared to the companies letting them why it's like if we allow all the features here why would people buy a higher one like a7 uh, mark 4 can easily do 4k 60 fps without crop but they do not let it why because why would people buy a1 a1 has the same soc that dual bionox x system same thing and that puppy can literally scan a 50 megapixel full frame sensor scale it down to 8k or scale it down to 4k and same soc cannot do that with 33k megapixel no it's a uh, gating uh, so to say basically so that will hurt you like compared to your smartphone your smartphone is like i'm trying my best man i'm giving you everything i got i'm giving you high speed i'm giving you telephoto zoom i'm giving my best and compared to these camera companies like yeah you can't really do that it's like why it's just a software function like none of them can give you a proper time lapse uh, recording inbuilt why not because they cannot why not it's like no 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 if they did that why will you buy the expensive one so this to counteraction basically camera is trying to go as low as possible they cannot be on a certain point my phone is reaching because of the competition and because of the billions of units sold they have much higher competition so they are crossing so that crossover happened in 2020 meaning at 2020 uh, if you have bought a quality smartphone there is a very good quality as in flagship this sort of prices you would have better experience and the kit lenses will not give you the image that you are looking it's like oh the background blur and like, no and compared to 2025 oof, you do not want to compete so camera is in weak footing that's why i never recommend super cheap camera no matter which brand take whatever brand have you never recommend it unless you are like just buying a camera like in that scenario you buy a panasonic camera micro four third for a webcam that's the cheapest i've seen and then comes the bitter part accessories you would think camera is expensive our brain can compute it's like oh i buy camera uh, or if you're a bit more professional you're like okay i buy camera i buy lenses those are not expensive what will kill you is the accessories because yes, lenses give you that feeling that bouquet that butter feeling that cannot happen for cheap you have to buy even a cheap third party lenses are one lakh rupee or more and let's not even go into the price of G Master Mark II. Yeah, those are ludicrously expensive. R mount, uh, uh, Canon R mount, ooh, they don't even allow third party. Yes, they do not allow third party for full frame. They allow third party for APS-A, which so far no company has actually made. Again, may be available right now, but I have not seen it. So lenses gives you feel, which costs a boatload of money. And after that, the biggest penalty after have to DSLR used to have very good battery life because again, unless you are taking a photo, the sensor was off. In mirrorless, sensor is always on. It has to remain on. Only then it can show you everything in the eye uh, viewfinder or the display. So it consumes battery exponentially more. Now again, you buy cheap uh, cameras, they have crappy battery, like hyper crappy battery, like use and throw kind of battery. Like uh, same battery that for a DSLR is good enough, but using it on mirrorless will not give you the same experience, same feel, same vibe. So you have to buy far more battery per shoot. For example, uh, in a DSLR day, one battery, good. Now, if you are doing a mirrorless and you are shooting, going into park and all that, there's a very good chance you will be consuming two or three batteries in one shoot. So yeah, again, not an issue in flagship, but it is an issue in this sort of uh, super duper hyper cheap edition. And memory cards, holy damn, these things are expensive. And again, I did expect them to become cheaper in price. However, they became cheaper in uh, capability, so to say. So it's not cheaper, but uh, but while it is getting more expensive, they are also getting faster. For example, the fastest right now is XQD or um, CFast Type B. Yes, they are the same thing. They are both NVMe, uh, Sony and Compact Flash Association had sex with each other and they made XQD into the new thing that we call CFast Type B. Uh, because again, Compact Flash Association was making this sort of thing, which was a SATA SSD on a card. It did not do so well. Compact Flash did awesome. It was like the early 2000s awesome GG card, uh, but it did not do well in the modern. They upgraded it to SATA interface. Uh, so instead of PATA that pin things, so SATA, it did not do well. So they went into Sony. Sony made XQD thinking it will work. Only Nikon is the other company that adopted it. it did not do well. So they are like, okay, let's make love to each other. And then they bastardized this XQD into Compact Flash. 
So compact flash is just NVMe SSD into this. And yes, you can buy NVMe SSD holder that puts it into your camera. Not recommended, but you can do it. And yes, people do it because again, that's cheaper. Let that sink in. You can buy adapter, buy a computer SSD, put it there, put it in your camera. That's cheaper compared to buying these. These are bloody expensive. So memory cards are expensive. Even SD card, UHS to SD card, damn, they're expensive. V90 card, God help you. And again, they also wear out. Uh, because I have worn out three SD cards and these are SanDisk Extreme Pro and yes, that's normal If you are recording video daily, you're gonna reach a point where ca card will randomly stop and be like Ah bro, <laughs> too uh, slow to write. It will happen. Again, depending how quickly it happens, depending on the temperature uh, Because there is a limit. The electron gate that is holding the electron charge, it, reading it is not an issue It's just like, I'm on, don't uh, worry about it. I'm off, don't worry about it. Writing is like, push! If first flush it everything, then push! They push electron through it. Uh, problem is you are pushing electron through a material which is isolator uh, or insulator quote unquote. So over time it wears down. So you can buy these and then you have to keep buying them. I'm on my fourth. So yeah, they are also expensive. Piles up, price piles up. So tripods, yeah, damn. You will think, yeah, who cares a tripod? Trust me, you will learn very soon that you need a good tripod. Again, not the latest and greatest, but a good tripod makes your life easier. Uh, this tripod that I'm using right now, it used to come with ball head. I thought it would be fine. No, it was not. Then I just got a video head on it. Trust me, these are things that you learn. That's like, you cannot cheap out on that. Lighting, let's not go there. This puppy is expensive and for good reason. Photo, uh, photo lights are cheaper because again, they are generally flash. But when you're talking video lights, they are expensive. And camera is just a gateway. Let that be very clear. If you're getting into this hobby, camera wise specifically, it's just a lot of more maintenance, a lot of more expenditure that you do not think about. Like, oh, now I may need a battery charging system that can charge multiple batteries at once or a lot of SD card. Okay, now I might need to buy an actual high speed SD card reader because God help you, these Wi-Fi's cannot transfer. Wi-Fi is reaching a point where it can transfer a gigabyte per second and uh, your camera's Wi-Fi is like 30. Like, heck, GoPros are reaching a point where it's like, hey, we improved it. Now it can actually do uh, almost 40. Uh, DJI Action 5 can almost reach 80 Mbps on Wi-Fi. Uh, again, it has the USB 3 inbuilt, so it can actually dump speed. And again, those are available, but on flagship smart uh, cameras, not on cheap cameras. So that's why x series will pile up very quickly. Now let's compare all this to context of a smartphone. Well, here's the deal. First thing you have to ask yourself, what is your aim? Are you a person who want to capture memory? Let's say you have a new kid and kids for some reason run on nuclear reactor. And yes, I am experiencing one. So they're very energetic. They're doing things. There is a moment. You want to capture it. Cut it. So, uh, I Again, I use this camera for sometimes, but again, it's, uh, it's hard. It's hard. I have missed things. And smartphone, Done. Go home. Sweet dreams. So fundamentally, if that's your aim, nothing will be smartphone. Uh, uh, nothing. Just nothing. And again, if you're like, I'm not getting the quality, trust me, at this point in time, if you're not getting it, that means you're not putting in the effort to learn how to do the smartphone thing properly. You're not uh, learn, uh, paying attention to the framing. You're not paying attention to the lighting angles. I have seen way too many footage where the people are like, oh, that's the light. I'm pointing at it. You're not supposed to. Put at 90 degree. That would be better. Put at 180. That would be awesome. So is those are subtle things. Again, those will improve your output exponentially compared to going to a better camera. So it's one of those things. If your memory capturing is your point, like, you know, events are happening, I want to capture it, smartphone will be better. Nothing will beat it flat out because memories are important. Another is uh, you are taking photographers and all that uh, jazz, but you are only feeding it to your family. You're not making money out of it. So basically you are uh, the local guy, quote unquote, that feeds into the socials. Family gathering is happening. You're taking photos and you're dumping it into Facebook groups, Instagram, family. Basically it's a family kind of thing. Yeah, you have to understand. Like I'm getting them like, you know, really F1.2 full frame cameras kind of look here, Steve. Does anybody care on their smartphone? Answer is no. So you have to understand, like really, realistically understand what's the penalty of it. You're buying so much equipment and you are spending exponentially large amount of money. Is the result like, you know, worth it kind of scenario. 
so that's there however there is one thing that i will say always spend money on it's audio that shall not cheap out on audio the easiest way to differentiate between a like a good streamer versus a, the streamer that's like you know people are complaining too much generally it's audio audio is one of those weird things where if it's good nobody talks about it that's the bitter part of it it's like oh you have good audio nobody will talk about it like if my audio was bad everybody will talk about it if it's okay nobody will talk about it it's like ah oh, it could do with this and that it's like that's the whole irony of it it's like a sugar in a tea where it's like if the tea is good you will just know i'm drinking tea if there is extra sugar you're like hmm there's sugar in the tea that's bad thing if people are talking about tenants audio that means tenants audio is bad you're not supposed to talk about it soundtrack that's a different thing. oh the music is different it's like feeling the music that's a different thing. but again if it's done integrated properly in the scene you will be lost that's the whole point of it so what's the primary thing where people cheap out is audio what's the thing that you have to spend money on audio does that matter if it's a smartphone or not no thankfully all smartphones after 2020 generally support external microphone be it rode wireless go to be it dji mic to invest in these things that will drastically drastically improve your uh, video quality specifically video uh video setup again lighting thing like for example in my scenario you get to see uh if you watch my old videos like 6 years ago you would have seen like there was a tv that was here i was sitting on a chair i'm like okay let's stand that's better okay now i have a tv then i was like okay let's upgrade to oled okay now i have a bigger tv then it's like okay let's put audio black phones again you whether like it or not like it but there is a setup that setup makes it infinitely better compared to if i was just standing here right all this whether you like it or not that's a different thing but there is it's a setup so same way you can have your own setup whatever have you setups matter and again it will be far greater return on your investment compared to going to for a better equipment rather than a better setup get for a better setup have a better lighting setup that will translate in my scenario that translates to giant six tubes there that is lighting up the whole scene so that will have much better what we call quicker return on quality compared to other things and having good phone setup let's say you actually bought a phone you actually bothered to do framing bothered to do lighting bothered to do all that again you will reach a point where it's like does it really make a difference if i jump from phone to like you know 4k no it won't like because again who is consuming it people are consuming it in their tiny phones so you have to oh and that's one of the thing that's the most painful for everybody after 2020 is that e smartphone displays have become brighter like they are so bright at this point even my s23 uh, fan edition where it's like i can actually see it in broad daylight without doing this in your camera phone <laughs> good luck oh uh, fuji's latest camera it's 480p not joking it's actually 480p for a 800 dollar camera the display is full <laughs> 480p again they use million dots because again each pixel it can have three or four dots so it gets multiplied by a bonkers amount so people are, oh million dots no the reason why they are not telling you resolution is garbage 480p how who the hell is manufacturing it i do not even know any phone that was made after 2015 that had that low of resolution who is manufacturing it man so yeah and that's the thing that that will piss you off more than you realize it's like every time because again if you are coming from a smartphone that is good you're like hey your smartphone auto adjust it's like and your camera is like where look like this and like i'm going to look through you find that you will be shocked especially for coming from a smartphone you will be shocked how little you do that so flat out in for low cost get into your smartphone build a ecosystem get a proper audio that will have much greater output and again for memory capturing for uh, basically for a family guys kind of scenario it's more than good enough do not be like oh i need a camera and again if you are doing a setup and all that that will drastically improve the quality compared to any camera sort that part out before you jump into a better camera setup because again cameras are expensive and they have to be they cannot be you cannot magically shrink them so this was my presentation on basically very cheap cameras versus smartphone in 2024 hopefully you have liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button share it amongst your friends that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press this like press it twice to show me extra disappointment please leave a comment because i do try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching